Yo, hello everybody and welcome to the Art of Affiliate Management or today's episode, The Art of How to Pay Affiliates Out. Um, today I have a very, very interesting guest with a topic that we never covered so far and it's how to pay out affiliates. And it's Mike Corral, the co-founder of SmartPay. And um, all our business is not functioning as nobody is receiving the money. So I'm very happy that he's here and speak about the payout trends for 2023 and 2024. And we also have a new presenting sponsor of this episode is the DMI Expo in Tel Aviv. It's the leading conference in Israel for digital marketing and for affiliations. And I will also make a keynote there about business development. And I will also put it down in the description with the code AFPAL 2023 DMI Expo. You get 10% off of your tickets. Enough with the advertising. Hope to see a lot of people there. And now, hello, Michael. Hello. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice you? to meet you. We actually met in a very interesting way about this. We speak later on as well. Um, for the people that don't know you and uh, that don't know the company, can you please introduce yourself and what your company is doing? For sure. So my name is Michael Coral. I'm one of the co-founders of SmartPay. Um, I started this company back in 2018 with two of my co-founders, uh, Jer Jeremy and Justin. Um, we actually started not just SmartPay, but a, uh, a crypto exchange called CoinSmart.com. Um, that was something we started in Canada. Um, at the time, there was not really a, uh, you know, the, the landscape in crypto in 2018 was very, very different than it was today, especially in Canada. There weren't some great, weren't many options for, um, you know, people to buy and sell crypto. Uh, so we thought that we would, you know, create an exchange at that time. We've actually known each other for a long time prior to that. Uh, we've done many businesses together from web development to web brokering to social media advertising companies. And in 2018, started CoinSmart.com to be a trusted, regulated uh, crypto exchange. Um, you know, so we started that. We very quickly added an OTC desk and our payments platform, Smart Smart Pay, as well. Um, very recently, though, um, probably about three three months ago, July 2023, um, we actually merged with another company, a Wonderfy Technologies, um, along with another exchange called CoinSquare.com, to become by far the largest um, crypto platform uh, in Canada, um, with just under about two million registered users across Canada. Um, you know, Wonderfy Technology saw the value in CoinSmart and our SmartPay solution to add, you know, a wholesome structure for crypto across Canada. So now with custody solutions and our crypto exchanges and payments platform, um, we really are the, you know, the poster child, I would say, for um, crypto in Canada um, and expanding globally as well. So what are the next countries where you are rolling out? Um, so in, in can and currently Canada for the exchanges, but our our payments platform is is global. Um, we have many clients in in Europe, in South America, um, Latin America. Um, we're moving overseas to uh, Australia as well for to offering our payments platform there too. Um, but really, our our payments platform is 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 global. So, but um, I guess that when you have like an affiliate that is sitting in China or India or God knows where, when people maybe don't even have bank accounts, um, your solution is available worldwide because they just need like the crypto wallet to send the cash there, right? Exactly, exactly. You know, paying out in stable coins, Bitcoin, things like that. Those are the most popular ones. Doesn't matter where you are in the world. Uh, as long as you have a crypto wallet, you're able to accept crypto as a form of payment. What is the most popular stablecoin at the moment to uh, pay out? Uh, definitely USDT, 100%. Mm -hmm. um, and what are others on the market uh, besides USDT? I also know only USDT and I also use it. Some people pay me like this, but uh, what are alternatives to this? Yeah, so you can use uh, USDC as well, uh, the circle back stablecoin. Um, Bitcoin is also very, very popular. Um, I'd say those are the big, the big, the big three for sure. Um, people still use some Ethereum as well, Solana. Um, but at the end of the day, those three USDC, USDT, and Bitcoin are, are, are by far the leaders as far as payment payments go. So let's say I'm like a network or a program. I want to pay out my affiliates with your solution. And yeah. I think nowadays everybody has this request. I see it maybe not on a daily basis, but definitely on a weekly basis. Also uh, at Masters in Cash. So what are the steps that a company has to do 
to work with you and how is the workflow when it comes then actually to pay out the affiliates? Yeah, you know, it's actually very, very simple. We have a very robust API that can be integrated into any affiliate network or any affiliate program. Um, our onboarding process is quite simple as well. We send them, a, we send the affiliate network, the merchant or the company we're working with a registration <coughs> link. Um, we get ver we verify the company, go through a KYB process to make sure they're very, very compliant. Um, and then they take our API and integrate into the back end of the program. Um, doesn't take much to do, you know, if they have a developer on, on, on site, um, you know, a few days and it could be done. You can set it up to make it super simple um, to automate um, payments out to affiliates. Um, even if you don't have a developer and you just want to be able to pay out one or two affiliates at one time, um, we have an, an online portal um, that's based on our APIs that the affiliate manager can just go in and manually send out crypto payments as, as they want at ad hoc. Um, so even if you're not tech savvy whatsoever, um, you're able to send out crypto payments very, very simply. Okay. Um, where you saw the opportunity to work with affiliate programs and uh, networks because you started as an exchange and then you moved into um, this uh, crypto payouts as well. In what year was this and when you saw the opportunity? Yeah, so that was interesting. So in 2018, maybe 2019, uh, we had some some clients in Canada just approach us to sell their Bitcoin, right? And that was it. They came in, they say, hey, I want to sell one Bitcoin, five Bitcoins, 10 Bitcoins. Um, and we figured out, we understood who these people were. They actually happened to be affiliates of different types of programs, whether it be in gaming and Nutra, e-commerce, financial services, cards. Um, and they were asking us for additional solutions. Right. Um, not just to sell their Bitcoin, but to say, hey, is there a way that, you know, I can offer send an invoice to my affiliate program um, so that I can get paid properly and keep keep track. So then we created an invoicing platform to allow the affiliates themselves to just manually send out invoices to the affiliate networks or the advertisers to, to get paid. Um, you know, so that was the first time on the pay inside. Um, then we quickly realized that if we built a more robust solution, um, the larger affiliate networks, the larger affiliates would then, you know, take, take, take that on as well. Um, and, and leverage the solution that way. Why there is even a need for crypto payouts. What are the typical affiliates that want to have it? Are they more like in tier three markets or is, are they everywhere and they just are crypto enthusiasts? So there are maybe other reasons for that. No, it's it's global. They want they want another option, right? You have other there's obviously other methods to get paid out, right? You have Venmo, Cash App, prepaid cards. Uh, a lot of the time there's um there's not really like a global way to be paid out. If you're using these like a Cash App as an example, um it's typically typically one one or two currencies, right? If you want to have a global, you know, affiliate network and paying out in all these different currencies, you can take one stable coin, USDT. It doesn't matter if you're in India or Africa or Canada or Europe. Um, USDT is USDT, and that can be paid out um, directly regardless of uh, of the currency, the native currency of the country that you're in. And um, let's speak about um, risks. There were a lot of e-wallets that failed, and um, you are a stock-listed company. So it's not something like um, like a, a small thing that is done by somebody in the backyard. You maybe started right. small in the backyard, but now you are like uh, big shots. Um, what is um, what makes crypto payouts and working with your company or general crypto payout solutions more safe than working with e-wallets? Yeah. So, I mean, as you mentioned, Wonderfy is a publicly traded company, you know, very well capitalized. There was a lot of... Uh, you know, heat coming on the crypto industry with, you know, FTX and all these other uh, companies shutting down, people are worried to work with crypto companies um, that may not be around tomorrow, right? Um, when we started the company, we wanted to make sure that we were doing it in a compliant manner and a trusted manner. We got the right licenses uh, in Canada, in Lithuania, um, in the US, uh, money transmitter licenses, MSBs, to make sure we are um, fully regulated and trusted acro across the, across the world, and not many you know crypto exchanges can say that, and crypto payments platforms actually 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 have that, right? So really, it's just a, another option for 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 payouts. Um, you know, people look to us as I mentioned as like the 
poster child of trust trusted crypto. If you're looking for a solution that um, is going to be around in you know 2028, right? It it would it would it would it would be us. There's there's a slew of crypto pay, payment options, but they're typically registered in you know in Gibraltar, Isle of Man, uh, Curacao, right? All these uh, all these places that are not necessarily as trusted as Canada. Right. And if you think globally, where do I trust, um, you know, what country would I trust the most with my money? Um, Canada is pretty, pretty much right at the top of that list. OK, um, this is already one of the advantages working with that. Do you have yeah. maybe even some examples about companies that implemented crypto payout and um they increase their business because it makes it so much more convenient for affiliates, how it's influencing the business of a company integrating a solution like you have? Yeah, see, they want to have as much optionality as possible. There's there's a slew of examples of you know traditional companies like AT and T offers customers to pay through uh, you know to pay for their solutions. Microsoft allows um, you to pay for Bitcoin for like Xbox credits. Um, Overstock.com allows you to get paid get paid with Bitcoin. The Dallas Mavericks in the United States, a, ba a basketball team, you can buy. Uh, purchasing game tickets and merchandise through the team's website. Uh, AMC movie theaters, also also the same idea. Um, I know I'm giving more general examples than, than affiliate networks, but it, it lends itself to say like, hey, it's it's really in, um, you know, it's really in the, the, the masses right now. I don't think we've reached mass adoption, but you're seeing these large companies um, take on the uh, take on crypto payments because because they, they see the opportunity, right? I think if you had to you know gauge on one side pay ins versus payouts, um, the pay in side is still relatively small, but the payout side is massive. They want um, to be able to track um, the payouts properly on the blockchain. Every single transaction that's made, um, you can go back to the history of time and see exactly how how, how that worked. Um, and again, they want they want that optionality, right? If you want to have a global network, uh, a global affiliate network, and you don't have a method of payment that can work um, globally, then you're falling behind, right? There's there's several um, compet like several affiliate networks who use it right now with like uh, I think it's uh, Click to Dep, uh, Aspen Media, uh, X Offer, Panda Affiliate. Um, they're all doing crypto payouts right now because um, they saw the need to do that because their affiliates asked for it. Um, you know, so if you don't if you don't have that, then I think you'll be falling behind. The the fees associated to crypto payouts are a lot cheaper than using e-wallets or credit cards or wires and things like that. So how much is it around from the percentage to throw in a number? It, it it depends, right? Um, we're see, we're seeing people being paid out, you know, at one one percent, give give or plus or plus or minus a percentage point depending on volumes. Okay, um, let's say you have a CFO that is a little bit more traditional, uh, maybe even concerned about accounting and tax, and God knows what that everything is in order. Um, us as the affiliate managers or business developers, we want to have, of course, as many solutions in our portfolio to offer to the affiliates to make the life easier for them and of course to pay out everybody no matter where they are living and what life situations their company maybe has yeah. uh, what are arguments for a cfo that is not concerned about this one or two days that a programmer has to maybe work on it or some extra workload but is really concerned about making it compliant to pay out like this what you can tell a CFO um, to convince them to work uh, with a uh, yeah. So solution. one of one of the most recent solutions or recent uh, regulations that are coming <laughs> coming around is the travel rule, right? What that what that what that means is for any payouts that are over a certain threshold, um, whether it be a thousand <laughs> or two thousand, depending on the jurisdiction, um, we actually need to collect. Um, the name of the person, the address of the person, and where they're actually sending that uh, cryptocurrency to, right? So we know that, okay, affiliate X is getting paid out and it's 
getting sent to their Coinbase wallet. And we have to submit that information directly to Coinbase so it matches um, the account at, at Coinbase directly, right? So from that standpoint, it has to be very, very compliant. Previously, you didn't have to do that. Um, an affiliate can, in theory, send a, a payment to wherever they want, and it may not be that person's that person's wallet, um, which is you know could be flagged for you know from for money laundering. Um, so it's very important now <laughs> travel to know exactly where all these crypto payments are going. Um, licensing is a big thing as well. Um, again, there's not not every crypto payment option has perhaps the right licensing to be able to facilitate those crypto payment options. Um, we have, op we have a, as I mentioned, an MSB in Canada, um, FinCEN regulation in the United States, um, a Lithuanian license as well to, to be able to facilitate crypto payments um, on, a, on a global scale. Um, you know, so if you're looking for a solution that's, um, you know, risk adverse, um, we're right at the top of that list. And um, in practical use, it works like this, that um, the company is sending you a wire of the total amount plus your fee, and you are you are practically ex uh, sharing then the crypto payouts to them, or how is the flow? That's exactly it, right? So if you have an affiliate network that wants to pay out, let's say, a thousand affiliates every single week, right? That's it. They send us a wire for, let's say... A million dollars or five million dollars or whatever the whatever the amount is and via our api we're able to in one push of a button um distribute um those thousand payouts um to all those affiliates at, at one at one time the affiliates themselves are the ones that you know either there's two ways to do it they can either provide the wallet address to the affiliate network and then the affiliate network takes a list uploads it and sends out the payouts or um the affiliate network says hey you you need to be paid out a thousand dollars or a thousand euro. Here's a link to accept that payout and actually choose the crypto you want to be paid out in and provide the address directly on that on that payout link. And you can even add some security measures too to ensure that it's being paid out to the right person. You you can ask a question like your mother's maiden name and provide that answer or the account ID of the affiliate uh, of the affiliates on the on the affiliate network themselves to be able to keep track of you know where that payout is going. Um, to make it super simple to, to facilitate that payout. But typically, as I mentioned, affiliate network gets the wire in and then the payments go out uh, in, in in crypto. And again, typically stable coins or, or Bitcoin. And how long it takes until the money or the, the cryptocurrency arrives at the affiliate? Pretty much instant, pretty much instant. Pretty much instant. Right? We have uh, we have um, you know different cadences. There's some clients of ours that want to get paid out daily. Some want to get paid out in real time. Some weekly. Some monthly. Real time. Yeah, real time. Exactly. They push they push the button right, and they want to get paid out. So they get the payout link, and then it, then it happens, and that's fine. Real time payouts also not bad. Uh, one question um, regarding maybe also an advantage. Once again, what about bounces? We have every month we have an affiliate is changing the bank account, not telling us or whatever, and the money is returned to us. So it's floating around. Is this situation also possible when it comes to crypto payout? Um, or is this address where the money is sent like there forever? Yeah, once it's sent, it's sent. There's like no no chargebacks or no bounce backs when it comes to uh, crypt crypto payouts. Um, the only downside of someone if the affiliate provides a, a, an incorrect wallet address, <laughs> um, of course, it gets sent to that wallet address, and you know they're not going to be able to receive that. So it's always important to double check and triple check the wallet address that you're providing to the affiliate network to ensure that you're getting paid out to that to that right address. I think if I count all the money that friends of mine lost because they put the wrong crypto address somewhere, it goes in the millions. I mean, really people that were sending drunk yeah. something to a friend and they sent more. So it's really absolutely and... crazy. Yeah, you got you to check and check again. We always, my rule of thumb is I look at the first like three digits of the wallet address, the last three digits, <laughs> and a, couple, a couple in the middle as well to ensure that I'm, it's being sent to the to the right to the right place. Um, that ha that happens. Uh, sometimes what happens is also on the pay inside. Uh, some people may 
overpay right to a certain wallet address and that's okay we're able to refund um, if we receive too much if the affiliate network or whatever receives too much crypto <laughs> we can actually refund that amount if there's not enough then we just request request for more right but once the payment gets made there's no there's no return of that there's no chargebacks um now we come to a completely different topic um if you have nothing more to add about uh paying out with uh, crypto not 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 this second but i'm sure if, if it comes up happy happy to address it yeah i mean in the end of the day we speak about this crypto payout so if something pops in your mind uh during the other question just say like dude i have your one or two things more no um, problem so we met in a very interesting way in ibiza it's now not part of the um of the podcast how but we met at a bar and we were talking about some let's say crazy situations that we encountered yeah. during a conference. Um, what are strategies that you are using to make, I mean, we have a direct connection because of this crazy encounter, but what are yeah. strategies that you are using to get like um, a good connection with somebody? Because in your case, it's even more important than for me, if somebody sends me traffic and I'm not paying this person out, yeah, well, maybe he burned traffic for one, two, maybe 10,000 euros, but that's all in some way handleable, but in your case, it's big money, it's millions. So how you build meaningful connections, especially when they are new? Yeah, no, it's a good, it's a good question. I mean, like I attend uh, many shows around, around the world and it's, it's something that you have to be, you have to be real. Um, at the end of the day, you know, I find we attend these shows, we go, you know, we sponsor them sometimes, we book meetings, all that fun stuff. And it's a very like rigid, rigid process. But I found that the, the best relationships, the best connections are what happened when we run into crazy encounters that we did in, I believe it was in Prague at that, the Tesla affiliate conference. There it started. Yeah, that's there how it's started. Right? Yeah. right? You bond over a drink you have, or you bump into them, or you know, you like the guy's dance moves, and then you just you bond with them that way, right? So I find that even if you're meeting somebody new, um, it can happen in the in the craziest places, right? So always kind of be on, right? Even if you're not, you know, at your booth at a specific meeting, right? Um, sometimes the the best connections happen when you just run into somebody, um, you know, on the dance floor or over a drink or outside for a smoke or where, wherever you are, um, you know, so I just try to build that relationship um, as real as possible. I try to find some common ground. Um, even if I'm from Canada, um, you're from overseas, there's always something that you know connects each other whether we have kids whether um you know we share the same uh you know affinity for scotch or a football team or whatever you find that common ground and then you just build that relationship uh and be as friendly as possible obviously if, if somebody is meeting us <laughs> please ask us what is uh what is the common ground uh that we have yeah, happy, happy to do that uh we'll be in um I'll be, well, I don't know when this is being uh, published, but I'll be in uh, Money 2020 in October <laughs> 2023. Um, and then at the uh, the Sigma Gaming Conference in November of 2023 as well. Um, I try to attend a, at least one or two shows uh, every single month because at the end of the day, um, we, in, in our business, it's all about relationships, right? I'm not going on, you know, LinkedIn trying to prospect for um, potential potential business. It's visiting these shows and seeing the people face to face, and they can understand. Okay, I like this guy. I trust this guy. Um, you know, I, I can bond with him. He's a real person, and I want to do business with him. Right? There's many people that you know we had tried previously to get a hold of before meeting them and working with them, but then we go and see them at three shows in a row and they're like okay like this guy is real he's been here for the last uh the last year or two at least minimum three or four years um you know i can trust this guy and i like you know i like the way he converses with me right so again all about building those relationships i have uh, the feeling now after 14 years um the less i put the business in the front the more successful it gets um, in the meantime, I just go out to meet new people. I have the habit that I avoid the meetups and the get togethers where I like my friends, uh, my anyway seating during the yeah. show and during like a private dinner. But I always try to go also to conferences where I know nobody and I go there without any expectations. 
And uh, then you just make a connection and sooner or later, these people have something or the people introduce you to somebody that is having exactly the business that you are uh, that you are looking for. So exactly. that is something that works now for me. You are also an OG in this industry for you as well. If you are completely new, that's maybe a bit different. But uh, for me, the less you force it, the uh, the better it goes. Yeah, you can't be forced. You can't just like always like sell your product and service the first time you meet you meet somebody, especially at these shows, right? Um, my best connections were made from people that I didn't sell to right out right off the bat, right? I would talk to them <laughs> for an hour just about their life and their business. Um, they would know what I do, but I wouldn't like push upon them like, hey, do you want to do crypto payouts for your affiliate network? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that right out right off the bat, right? They have to know who I am and trust me first before I, you know, open the kimono and you know, give them a hard, a hard sell, which I which I still never do. I mean, for the hard sell, you have our homie Hector. Pardon? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, Michael has one guy in the team, Hector. He wrote me on LinkedIn. So he made exactly what Michael is not doing, but uh, that's why he is there <laughs> in the company. And he's like super good. I even uh, showed Michael the messages I got. I told him, hey, this is not working. But now, Mike, let me make this uh, podcast because it was not forced. Uh, exactly. Shout, so, out to, shout out to Hector. Thanks, Hector. For shout out to Hector. Big, uh, big respect to you. Uh, where is he based? He's based in Europe. Uh, he's based in, in Toronto. He's based ah, he's in Toronto. Also in Canada. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Yeah, so, so maybe you bring him one day to a show and uh, we have a beer together. Um, speaking about the shows, you attend quite some shows. Also, you speak on shows. And uh, it's also not the first time you made a podcast. Um, how is this appearance um, as like public figure or whatever? Uh, helping you in your daily work? Is it making it easier? Are people approaching you more? What do you get out Absol of that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, people want to work with people that they respect and they trust. When you see somebody on stage um, or you see somebody on a podcast, um, they see you as an expert in that in that field, right? Um, you explain your history. Um, so they trust you a lot, a, lot, a lot more. And I find that when you do more and more and more of these things, um, it makes these conversations a lot easier. Like, oh yeah, I saw you on the Sigma stage or I saw you at uh, at Test doing a podcast or I saw you doing the crypto meetup at, uh, you know, Webmaster Access in, in, in Cyprus, right? So as, the more you get out there, the more people know who you are, the easier it is to make make those connections and and, and get and get business done. Um, so, you know, so having that platform as, as the expert is invaluable. And I never, I never always, I didn't always do this. Um, you know, for the first few years starting it, um, I was more behind the scenes kind of building the company. And then as we, as we grew, I would do more and more and more of these. And I found people just approaching me a lot, a lot more saying, Hey, I saw you, um, you know, let's, let's, let's talk. I'd love to learn more about what you're doing. Um, so it's, uh, it's hugely valuable. Um, not everyone can do it, right? Some people are introverts and it's very hard to like, you know, get get out there and be public facing. Um, but uh, even if you are, practice. And the more and more you, you do it, the better you're going to be at it. Um, I see really like a trend regarding this. I get um, once in a while, I got requests from people that want to come on the podcast. Um, they want to come because they were never making maybe even a panel. Uh, definitely not a speech and um, they 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 want to have this personal branding and it gets more and more important because let's face it services and products they are replaceable um, I, I I could find another company that is offering crypto payouts maybe they are cheaper maybe they have more currencies uh, whatever but this guy is maybe anonym or it's an it's a dick or something like this so it's definitely um, helping to be in the spotlight. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, people want to work with like-minded people, right? We've had most of our businesses come from um, businesses that have already had crypto payments previously that move over to us because of our service, <clears throat> because, of, because we're friendly, because we have a fantastic product, a very simple API um, based in Canada, publicly traded, licensed and regulated. They come to us for, for all of that. Um, 
but most importantly, they they come because they they like us, right? Um, we're on this podcast now because we bonded, right? And you want to work with us now because you know me, right? Um, if I was just like a a little LinkedIn picture, or I just sent you, you know, online a link to register, like, okay, I don't know who these guys are, even if they are publicly traded, even if they are regulated and all of that, um, who are the guys behind that? And if you don't know that, and you can't see them face to face, then it makes it a lot more challenging to to do business, in my opinion. So is the um, is maybe even a big part of your business coming then from uh, recommendations from clients that you already have? Um... Absolutely. Our our affiliate and referral partner network is 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 quite large. Um, and again, it all comes down to building building trust with these with our referral partners and affiliate partners. So uh, we get a lot of business from that. Mm -hmm. Right. A lot of a lot of the time we integrate with, um, you know, other payment service providers that don't have crypto as a rail yet. Um, and they're already plugged into a number of different merchants, a number of different affiliate networks. And we just add on that that crypto layer, um, which makes it, you know, kind of like that one to many approach a partner with, you know, a large PSP and you'll be able to, you know, get a whole bunch of merchants just just at once versus going after, you know, each affiliate network one at a time. Okay. Um, actually, I have one more question. Yeah, sure. Somewhere you already answered this, but it's our golden nugget. So the golden nugget yeah. is the best advice that you can give mm -hmm. to the people out there that we have not heard 1000 times. People come and say, my best advice is to network. Yeah, okay, but this we hear all the time. So it's really about hearing something new. Yeah, you know what? It's like networking obviously is an important thing, but I would say you never know where you're going to find business, right? So I I attend these shows and there was one time, this was actually a, a previous business to this. This was when we were doing our, our web brokering probably back in, I guess, 20, 2010, 2011. And I was attending Affiliate Summit. I'm sure you've been there before, East, West, whatever it was. Yeah, both of them. And and it was at the end of the show and we were, you know, we were tired after three or four days of constant networking and, you know, visiting booths and meetings and stuff like that. And we decided to, you know, just go, go to the spa, right? Myself and my co-founder, we decided to just go to the spa and just sit in the jacuzzi, right? Just to calm, calm down for a little bit. Um, so we sat in the jacuzzi and sure enough, there was somebody in the jacuzzi across from us that we saw had a wristband that also went to the show. Um, and we just started talking to him and just like... <clears throat> joking around, asking how the show was, that that sort of thing, it ended up that he had a web business that he was actually looking to sell. And that was exactly what we were doing coming to that show. And we hadn't found any other business prior to that. But literally, like before we we're going to go on our flight, we just wanted to go to the spa, sit in the jacuzzi. And the guy, we ended up selling his business for 5 million bucks, just, be, just because we went into the spa, into the jacuzzi and talk and talk to that guy. Right. So at the end of the day, like when you run a business, you don't want to be on all the time. You want to have that work life balance. But if you're in public, you never know like who you're going to meet. It could be, you know, in, in the coffee line. It could be, you know, the person sitting beside you on, on the airplane. Right. It could be the guy you just like bump into at, at, at the bar um, and you're sharing the same type of drink. Right. So never like the advice is, you know, you never know where you're going to find that business, right? And it could it could be anywhere. So always be on and be open minded as to as as to where you're going to find that business. Good point, and also to be nice to everybody, even if you cannot do business with them on the trade shows, because I saw so much arrogance uh, from people that were oh, just yeah. going there to um, to find their business. It was mostly people that are a little bit older. But they are new to the industry and they maybe come from something where they were like super important and they still think they are, but they start uh, on the bottom of the food chain and they are arrogant and it's yeah. shit and all these people are like gone that I remember of. You know, I'd hope today that it's table stakes that you have to be nice to people, right? And the people who are arrogant or, you know, pump their chest and say, you know, they're um, whatever doesn't stink, then, you know, then, uh, yeah. you know, that's it's an issue um but uh for me you, you gotta be nice you have to right uh that's how i built that's how we built our business right just by building you know um facilitating relationships and uh you know 
making sure that, uh, you know, not only that they like us, but that we actually have a, a good product too, right? You could be the nicest guy in the world, but if your product is crap, then no one's going to buy from you. So yeah, you it got, was with me in my restaurant. That. I'm a nice guy. I had good food, uh, but uh, my restaurant concept sucked. So I, uh, I destroyed five of them. In a exactly room. right. Sex, you got to you still have a good product, right, and a good service at the at the end of the day. Um, and thankfully, uh, we 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 do we do have that. Okay, and thankfully, uh, you joined today this podcast to shine some light over uh, payouts to affiliates, over crypto, and in general the payout market, and also about personal branding, behaving on shows, networking, and so on. So, Michael, thank you very much for the interview. And also, thank you very much once again for the DMI Expo in Tel Aviv for presenting the episode. And, uh, Michael, I see you then in Malta, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Looking forward to it. Okay. Then have Thanks a great day, me. everybody. It was a pleasure. And uh, hit us up when you see us how we met. What is the story? What bounded us? Sounds good. Take okay. Care. Have a good one. Ciao.